You want a war? You're gonna get one. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 2nd of February 1998. Tonight Raw comes from Indianapolis, Indiana while Nitro takes place in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. On Thunder last week the entrance set was changed after just 3 episodes and JJ Dillon kicked things off by issuing a fine to Kevin Nash. 50 grand, 50 grand for powerbombing Ray Trailer last week, I'd say it was totally worth it. Nick Patrick also broke his silence on Thunder, he said he stands by his 3 count at Starcade and he wants to officiate the Sting vs Hogan match at Super Brawl, wonderful. And DDP said that Chris Benoit is worthy of a US title shot and Dallas wants to give Benoit that title shot next week on Thunder. Kevin Nash and Conan took on Rick and Scott Steiner in the main event and Scotty Steiner couldn't have cared less about the match. He and Buff Bagwell had a pose down on the entranceway and Rick was left all alone to take a beating. In the end Nash got disqualified and he decided to jackknife Charles Robinson because why not? Nash gets arrested, Buff Bagwell gives Big Sexy a toke and there wasn't anything else of note that happened on Thursday night but if anything needs clarified throughout Nitro I'll be sure to let you know. Alright you're all caught up on thunder so let's check out the first 60 minutes of Monday Nitro. The commentators announced that Sting's gonna wrestle tonight, Sting vs Randy Savage is our Nitro main event. Psychosis vs Juventud Guerrero opened up the show and Psychosis came out wearing a white version of his usual attire, looking good Mr Kosis. The flock entered the arena during this match and they took their seats as Hoovy pulled off a step up flying head scissors that only a few people in the audience really appreciated. Psychosis's aerial attack got countered with an inverted atomic drop and Hoovy pulled off a diving head scissors and a top rope victory roll but Psychosis stayed in the match. Hoovy took a reverse suplex that had a bit of snap to it but he countered a dive to the outside with a drop kick. Guerrero then performed the 450 splash and Juventud Guerrero wins the Nitro opening match. Dallas Page then cut a promo all about Chris Benoit. Page says Benoit is one of the most underrated superstars in the business and Page respects Benoit's work ethic and that's why he's granting him a US title shot. DDP then says it's obviously obvious that the people want Benoit to get an opportunity and so does DDP. Page wants to know if he can make Chris feel the bang. Ultimo Dragon had to overcome Raven's flock interfering in his match against Smackhead Kidman but young Billy Boy managed to put on another good performance. In the end Kidman tapped out to the dragon sleeper, the flock launched an attack afterwards and dragon took a ridiculous german suplex followed by Kidman shooting star press. Kevin Nash then comes out to address the 3 fines he has to pay and he says he just saw Kidman perform a variation of the powerbomb and Nash didn't see Billy getting taken out of the arena in handcuffs. I watched that match back twice and Kidman didn't perform any variations of the powerbomb by the way, there was this sit down spine buster but yeah. Nash says it's not the move, it's the person performing the move. WCW thought they had a trump card in the giant but it didn't quite turn out that way. There isn't a fine Nash can't pay and if Nash can't pay it then first United Hollywood Hogan would have no problem doing so. Nash says he'll do what he wants, there's nothing WCW can do about it. Nash is just too bad big, too talented, too sexy and too sweet. Chris Jericho gave the Jericho-holics a big thank you for making him the superstar he is today. Jericho's sorry that Rey Mysterio's injured and he's sorry it just so happened to occur in Rey's match with the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla but Jericho does hope that it never ever happens again so at least there's that. Jericho wrestled Super Colo next and Jericho won with a lion tamer. The final match of R1 was a TV title match, Booker T defends against Steve Regal, Regal's second to last Nitro match of this particular run. Booker had to readjust a little and try to adopt to Regal's style, something he managed to do quite successfully. Regal flexed after Booker missed a running crossbody but Booker came back with a back suplex, the spin a rooney and the Hardham sidekick to pick up a victory. 
Raw begins with a special announcement from D Generation X, a State of the Union address, and I'm not going to be able to repeat what was said in this intro because the video's going to get flagged. If you jump over to my Twitter page though, I've posted the full uncut and uncensored version of this intro. The story, according to Sean and Hunter, was that the USA Network sent a memo to the World Wrestling Federation telling the company they need to tone down the language among other things, and after some convincing, Vince McMahon agreed to let DX make fun of the memo and address the fans and the network about what words they can and can't say. Oh shit. What your fucking mouth? What fuck me. God damn it. The uncensored version something the company probably wouldn't want fans to see nowadays, but Hunter runs down the bad language DX can and can't say. HBK then wraps it up by doing a Bill Clinton. He says he did not sleep with that young intern. I was up all night. <laughs> Again, check out the uncensored version on my Twitter page though, it's one of those things you need to see and having it explained to you makes it lose all its humour. As the story goes, the USA Network got a kick out of DX's address and they were then encouraged to get even more risque. This right here though was the most foul mouthed promo in WWE history. DX are gonna cut a promo in the ring next to kick off Raw while Conan takes on Hugh Morris on Nitro. Sean and Hunter are decked out like a pair of Uncle Sam's as Jim Ross announces that WrestleMania 14 has completely sold out. Red, white and blue balloons fall from the sky as Michael Cole compares DX's entrance to a political campaign. Sean and Hunter say Austin vs Tyson is the rattlesnake vs the pitbull. Two men who stand for principles, two men with different beliefs, but most importantly, Tyson and Austin are two men who want each other. So DX and the people say let them fight. Vince McMahon, Don King, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, they should all let them fight. DX lead a let them fight chant and the crowd goes along with it, but then the glass shatters and Steve Austin makes his way to the ring. For the first time since winning the Royal Rumble, Austin comes face to face with the WWF champion and while he appreciates DX promoting a possible Tyson fight, Stone Cold reminds Sean that Austin won the Royal Rumble and therefore HBK's ass belongs to Stone Cold. WrestleMania, today, whenever, the WWF belt is coming to Stone Cold and that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Austin's words quickly made Sean cut the crap and the joking was over. Sean's got an angry look on his face as the two continue to square up to each other and just before Austin leaves he decides to flip off China. Over on Nitro we've got Conan vs Hugh Morris, remember these two were in a tag team before Conan joined the NWO? I bet you forgot about that because I certainly did. Morris pulls off a Japanese arm drag and Conan gets out of the ring after a press slam. k Dog then talks business with Vincent before resuming the match, Morris refuses a handshake so Conan hits him with his rolling clothesline and this gets followed up with a dropkick. Vincent gets a cheap shot in too but Morris gets a chance to come back when he trips Conan up and he drops a few elbows. Conan then takes a power slam, Morris knocks Vincent off the apron, Vincent goes for the moonsault but Conan counters with a power bomb. That's right, the commentators say nothing, there's no mention of any fines or anything being outlawed. Conan follows this up with a kneeling face buster to win the match, so let's see if they come back to this power bomb business a little later on. Spoiler, they don't, they don't even mention it again so Conan got away with it. Scott Hall vs Jim Neidhart's our next match on Nitro, on Raw Cactus Jack battles Chainsaw Charlie. Before the Raw match we see Mick Foley and Terry Funk sharing some friendly words with each other earlier in the evening. Mick says he remembers getting advice from an old world champion years ago telling him to stop doing what he's doing or he'll be in a wheelchair by the age of 30. Mick says he loves dude love but if he's gonna go out and end up in a wheelchair it's gotta be his Cactus Jack and tonight's match is what he'd want people to remember him for. Terry Funk says the winner of this next match will be known as the king of the hardcores. Funk wants to go out as a hardcore wrestler and he's got a chance to get hardcore in the ring tonight. So while Terry loves Mick as a son, shit's on tonight. The two joke that maybe both of them will get taken out for good in our next Raw match, so there's certainly some anticipation being built up for this one. Before Cactus makes his entrance he says Terry that's not a garbage can, here's a garbage can and Mick wheels a fucking dumpster out of the stage. Terry's master plan of sneaking up behind Cactus and taking him out with a chair shot wasn't a good one. Mick takes the chair away and Terry takes a few shots to the ribs. 
Mick then busts a garbage bag across Funk's back and the Funker takes a double arm DDT on the rampway. Jim Ross then announces the No Way Out main event. These two right here, along with Owen Hart and Steve Austin versus D-Generation X and the New Age Outlaws. Cactus drops a ladder on Chainsaw Charlie and Charlie counters a suplex attempt with an inside cradle on the rampway. The two roll down to the ring before getting to their feet and Mick takes a few right hands before Terry starts filling up the ring with garbage cans. Again, Funk's master plan doesn't work out too well because it's Mick who makes use of those garbage cans and Terry takes some serious shots. Mick then shows mercy, he can't do it anymore, he can't hurt his friend, so he hands Terry the trash can and he gives him a free shot. When Terry shows mercy, the crowd boos. When Terry hits Foley from behind, the crowd cheers. Foley takes a few whacks before getting the trash can thrown right in his face. There's an old lady in the front row looking really concerned. Foley comes back with a back elbow, he places the trash can over Terry's head and he proceeds to perform a pile driver which was never gonna look great but they made the most of it I guess. We come back from a commercial break and Cactus takes a few ladder shots on the entranceway. Terry then goes back to plan A and he hits Cactus with a chair and then Terry sets up a table. He goes for a pile driver but Cactus backdrops Funk into the dumpster and he applies the mandible claw afterwards, knocking Terry out cold inside the dumpster. Mick then climbs up a ladder, he gets on the Titan Tron and he performs an elbow drop. The two men are now inside the dumpster and this is when the New Age Outlaws show up and they close the dumpster lids over before tying them up, ensuring that Foley and Funk can't escape. After debating what to do next, Gunn and James decide to push the dumpster off the stage and the crowd goes nuts. Nuts. The outlaws celebrate, but they stop celebrating when they realize they could have gone a step too far this time. Dusty Rhodes comes to the ring with Scott Hall, San Antonio says they came to Nitro to see the New World Order and Scott says he's annoyed that he won't be getting his title shot at Super Brawl after winning the Battle Royal. The bad guy's not sure if he should be mad at the guy who wears a skirt, Roddy Piper. He doesn't know if he should be mad at Sting and he doesn't know if he should be mad at Hulk Hogan. The thing is, and I wanted to say this last week and I didn't for one reason or another, but why did Scott Hall back up Hulk Hogan on the Nitro after sold out if he was so annoyed with him? Scott walked away from Hogan at sold out, the next night he was best friends with Hulk and this week he doesn't know if he should be annoyed at Hollywood. It's small things like this that lead to bigger problems within WCW programming. Dusty says he stands in counsel over Roddy Piper's decision and over Piper's authority. Scott Hall got the shaft but the NWO will continue on forever and the NWO party isn't gonna stop. So yeah, Dusty Rhodes said absolutely nothing. Tony Schiavone has no idea what Dusty standing over counsel even means. Neither do I. Jim Neidhart comes to the ring, we settle in for what's sure to be a six and a half star classic, but then Luis Piccoli jumps in and he tells Scott not to wrestle this match. Scott deserves his title shot and until WCW gives Scott his opportunity, he won't need to wrestle, Louis gonna take his place. This was all a setup. Hall cheap shots the anvil when Jim thinks he's gonna fight Spicoli. The referee starts the match while Louis gets out of the ring. Scott lays the boots in before bringing Jim to the corner for a few right hands. Neidhart gets whipped to the other side but he gets out of harm's way and Hall takes a few forearm shots before getting sent to the mat with a shoulder block. Louis jumps on the apron, allowing Jim to pull something from his tights, it's uh, it's, it's tape over his thumb. Don't tell me we're gonna see the long retired anvil spike, outlawed in 30 different promotions for how deadly it is. Yeah, there it is, Jesus Christ. Anvil moves from the anvil spike to just flat out choking his opponent and Charles Robinson says, yep, this is fine. Dusty Rhodes jumps on the apron to stop this attempted murder and this allows Scott to wake up and the anvil takes the outsider's edge. Look at that. It was all worth it just to see that outsider's edge. Spicoli beats the anvil up after the bell and Davy Boy Smith runs in for the save, looking a lot better than what he did last week to be fair. Neither Scott Hall nor Dusty Rhodes helps Spicoli out.
Lex Luger cuts a promo next on Nitro while the aftermath of the New Age Outlaws attack gets aired on Raw. Double Denim Flexi Lexi faces Randy Savage again on pay per view. Tony Schiavone says their Super Brawl match will be a no disqualification contest, so yes, yeah, strap yourselves in for that one, folks. Luger takes his denim shirt off and Gene Okerlund gets a little excited. Lex says he's counting the days, hours and minutes until Super Brawl. There was a time when Lex admired Randy Savage, but not anymore. Mean Gene says that Randy Savage is currently out of control, his actions over these past few weeks have been undeniably fucking crazy, and Lex says they call Randy the most dangerous man in wrestling but Lex is ready for it, and that's why he accepted the no disqualification match. When Randy dropped the elbow on the total package, it got Luger's competitive juices flowing. Yeah, competitive juices. Macho better get ready for Super Brawl and he better get ready for the torture rack because everyone wants to see it. Not a lot here to be honest, but competitive juices sounds like an off-brand steroid the boys buy on AliExpress. On Raw, shit has completely hit the fan as almost every staff member on hand comes out to check on Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, while the outlaw's regret slowly turns into fear for what they have just done. The WWF spent a lot of time on this by the way, this takes up a large portion of the Raw broadcast in hopes of making it feel as real as possible, and I do remember watching this as it happened, they take commercial breaks while Foley and Funk get attended to. Looking back now, the dumpster fall doesn't look too dangerous and that's maybe because we are desensitized to this kind of thing, but back then they made a big deal out of this, and the commentators done a great job of making the bump seem way, way worse than what it was. Jim Ross compares it to a car crash, and he gives one of my favourite Jim Ross lines of all time when he says, there's some idiot out there saying, well, they learn how to fall. Vince McMahon shows up and the outlaws explain they didn't mean to hurt Mick and Terry so bad, and their spot just didn't turn out as planned. Vince is angry, the superstars are angry, and when Mick and Terry get pulled out and put on a stretcher, Flash Funk loses it. Flash tries to go after the outlaws and he has to get held back. This sets off the rest of the roster and a group of guys try to attack Road Dog and Badass. McMahon's right in the middle of it as other superstars and officials try to break things up. Heels and babyfaces help Cactus and Terry to the ambulance, the superstars take a moment to reflect on what just happened, and then the outlaws get interviewed backstage. This bit right here, I thought, was excellent. The outlaws are legitimately remorseful, Jim Ross wonders if the outlaws did what they did so they could try to get over, and James says for guys like the outlaws there aren't many opportunities to get over. Sometimes you see a target of opportunity and you have to attack it, but maybe they went too far tonight. JR says Funk and Foley have families, and Jim says the Outlaws have families too. Just then, DX show up and Hunter and Sean back up the Outlaws 100% and they tell them they done the right thing. DX are always told to go out and outdo themselves every week and that's what it takes to get to the top. Hunter slaps Road Dog and Billy Gunn seems legit surprised when James squares up to Hunter. Hunter says if it wasn't Cactus and Charlie then it would have been Gunn and James. The Outlaws need to smarten up and start looking after themselves because that's what gets ratings and that's how you make it. DX then remind the Outlaws before leaving that the show always goes on no matter what happens. Again, I thought this was brilliant and I thought the Outlaws played it perfectly too. Billy Gunn vs Owen Hart takes place next on Raw while Bill Goldberg battles Mark Starr on Nitro. The Nitro commentators are now really starting to hype up Goldberg and they're talking about how he's taken the pro wrestling world by storm, however they're still not saying how many wins he's had in a row. Mark Starr makes the common mistake of trying to attack Goldberg before the opening bell but Goldberg quickly brings Mr Starr to the mat with a leg lock. The ref forces a break and Mark goes for a submission move of his own but he gets punched in the face before Goldberg delivers a gorilla press falling par slam and then Mark gets folded after a spear, oh my. We then see a jackhammer in the middle of the Alamo Dome and that's another win for Billy Boy. Bill defeated Yuji Nagata on Thunder, he then speared the Ming Manley meter when he took on the Minger on Saturday night, he defeated Buddy Lee Parker at the Boston Brawl show that was broadcasted on the internet, audio only, and Mr Starbar got fucked up here on Nitro pretty good so that means Goldberg is now 28-0. 
On Raw, Owen attacks Road Dog before beginning his match with Billy Gunn. He's angry about what just happened to Cactus and Chainsaw and he wants to teach these two a lesson. Gunn gets backdropped and sent over the top rope, Owen performs a plancha and he keeps the pressure on with a ton of right hands. Badass takes a suplex here followed by a European uppercut and back inside the ring Owen chokes Gunn with his boot. Gunn gets a chance on offense when he drops Owen across the top rope and Road Dog gets in a cheap shot too. Gunn then performs a neck breaker and he stops a sharpshooter attempt with a thumb to the eye. All this isn't enough to stop Owen though, the Blackheart performs a second rope crossbody and he then counters a sunset flip with a sharpshooter. Owen's forced to break the hold when Road Dog jumps on the apron and then D-Generation X show up. Owen Hart's outnumbered big time and the Outlaws and DX take turns at beating Owen up. Even China gets in on the action. After getting destroyed on the outside, the beating makes its way up to the stage where Hunter DDTs Owen and Sean screams at the camera about TV ratings. DX then tell the outlaws this is the time to prove themselves, it's time to throw Owen off that fucking stage. Road Dog and Badass lift Owen up and they swing him over the stage. They're about to let go on the count of three but officials run in and stop an absolute disaster taking place inside the war zone. Sean shouts at Gun and Road Dog that this is what it takes. The outlaws have to keep pushing the envelope and taking things further. The outlaws though say a little apprehensive as DX scream in their faces. Michael Cole calls in from the hospital and he says doctors are now looking over Cactus and Chainsaw. Once there's more information available, Michael Cole will call back in. Mosh takes on Mark Merrow next on Raw. On Nitro we have the rematch of the century, British Bulldog vs Steve McMichael. Merrow isn't happy that Sable's out here flaunting her big bangers to the audience, so he tells her to put on her robe. She's then ordered to disrobe Marvelous Mark, and someone delivers a box of chocolates to Sable and this is enough to make Merrow see red and he tells Sable to get to the back. Mark says he needs someone a little more reliable, one of the beautiful people. So here comes Goldust dressed up as Marilyn Manson, yeah, I've got nothing, sorry. Marsh gets thrown to the outside and Goldust drops him over the guardrail, Mero then pulls off a rough looking sit down powerbomb, that'll be a fine from JJ Dillon there good sir. Marsh replies with a power slam and a back body drop, but Marilyn Dust makes all the difference on the outside and Marsh gets distracted. Finally the headbanger takes Goldust out but this leaves him wide open for a low blow. The referee doesn't see it and Marvelous Mark picks up the win. After everything else that's happened on Raw, this match just didn't come across too well. Something that does come across well though is another Mongo vs Davy Boy Smith match on Nitro. Mongo's happy to be home in Texas tonight and he says, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Steve underestimated the British Bulldog but he won't let it happen again tonight. What Mongo didn't have covered though is the fact that Davy took a shit ton of competitive juices in the back and he's ready to absolutely annihilate McMichael tonight on Nitro. Davy took so much competitive juices that he thought this sign right here said hey Davy kick his fucking ass. The two fight on the outside and Davy's atomic drop makes Mongo jump up and down in serious pain. Mongo lures Bulldog back into the ring but that doesn't work out too well, both go tumbling back out and… Jesus Christ is Davy okay here? I, okay. Bulldog gets thrown into the ring steps and the two fight on the entranceway. The referee calls for the bell, we have a double count out. The fight goes all the way up to the commentators area and the two keep scrapping all the way through the curtain. This was so so shit. The two are gonna fight at Super Brawl by the way and I for one am looking forward to how rough around the edges that match is gonna be. Farouk vs Chains is our next match on Raw. On Nitro we get our weekly Hollywood Hogan promo. Before the Raw match, Bradshaw wants to know when he's gonna get an opportunity to get his grubby little hands on Barry Windham, and Windham says Jeff Jarrett's a better tag team partner than Yosemite Sam ever was. So Barry's more than happy to team up with Double J to face Bradshaw and whoever Bradshaw can find for a tag team partner. That match takes place in a moment. We then get a pre-taped vignette featuring Tiger Ali Singh. It seems like the WWF tried a few times to get this guy's television run started and they fucked it up every time. The last time we saw him on Reliving the War was back in the One Night Only review. 
Tiger says that his people call him the next Arnold Schwarzenegger or the next Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> but he's gonna put Hollywood and TV on hold because all his attention needs to be on the WWF. He calls himself the true messiah and he works out in his basement gym. I'm gonna be honest, it's a fucking fantastic waste of TV time here. Farouk comes out with the nation while Chains comes out with his DOA cronies and Ahmed Johnson and Ken Shamrock. It's the dream team lads, watch out. Ahmed's got the fanny pack filled with competitive juices and Sean's happy dust. So how does this one end folks? Does it A end with a clean pinfall? B end in a brawl? C end with a faction arguing among themselves? If you picked B, you're wrong. I know, I was surprised too. The answer is C. Kama made a mistake and he tripped up Farouk instead of Chains. The nation then argued among themselves and Farouk got counted out. It almost turned physical too when Farouk and Kama argued on the outside and Farouk decided he needed to show his faction who calls the shots. So he forces the nation to line up at the entranceway and he forces them to perform the nation salute but you can clearly see that a few faction members weren't too eager to follow Farouk's orders. During the match, Michael Cole phoned back in and he said Terry Funk had regained consciousness while Foley was still slipping in and out of consciousness. Michael hopes to come back with more information before tonight's main event. And that match is a singles match between Steve Austin and Road Dog Jesse James. On Nitro, Bischoff presents Hogan as the heavyweight champion of the world and Hogan says Kevin Nash is the real giant killer and the man who watches Hogan's back. Money is not a problem, so Big Sexy has the green light to powerbomb whoever he wants. Hogan then addresses the referee issue at Super Brawl, and Hogan says Mr. Nick Patrick should be the referee. Nick calls it right down the middle, so Hogan, Bischoff and the whole NWO, excluding Macho Man Randy Savage, vote for Nick Patrick, the referee, the Super Brawl main event. Speaking of the Macho Man, Hogan says Savage is still on his own. Hogan's not gonna tell Randy all about Sting's weak points. Savage can work that out for himself in tonight's main event, so Hulk's more than happy to see Sting defeat Savage and then Hulk will beat Sting at Super Brawl. It's just part of the pecking order according to Hollywood Hogan, brother. Bradshaw found himself a tag team partner to face the NWA next on Raw. Over on Nitro, Disco Inferno battles Raven. Raven says throughout his trials and tribulations, the heartbreak and the misery of his life, there's only one man who Raven ever took advice from. And that man told him two things, there are no rules and someone will feed the DDT, quote the Raven nevermore. If we assume Raven wasn't talking about himself, who was the man who gave Raven this advice? Answers in the comments. Raven slaps the shit out of Disco before throwing him to the outside. Raven throws himself on top of Disco before grabbing a chair. He sets it up in the middle of the ring and Disco takes an arm drag and a drop toe hold on that chair. Raven then takes a moment to think about how fucking ridiculous Disco looks right about now. Raven sets up another chair move but Disco fights back and he pulls off a pretty decent looking clothesline that puts Raven on the mat. Disco then tries to steal it with a schoolboy pin but Raven kicks out. He tries the this twice by the way. And Raven then goes down after a swinging neckbreaker. Bobby Heenan says Disco's never looked so good which is a statement that's been made countless times now on WCW programming. We then see three back suplexes, two from Disco and one from Raven. Disco tries to keep Raven at bay with a few boots in the corner but Raven was never gonna lose this match was he? Raven puts Disco down with his even flow DDT and Raven secures a pinfall victory. I like the chair spots in this bout, Raven does bring something different to his match matches on WCW Nitro, so thanks Raven. On Raw, Bradshaw teams with Flash Funk to battle Barry Windham and Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, Flash Funk and Bradshaw, what a team. You guys came up with a few tag team names and we've got Funk and Hell, Funk Asaurus, Flash and Stash, Yippie Kaye Motherfunker, Funky Protection Agency, Ratings Protection Agency, Brokeback Funk, JB LOL, Barry Windham looks different, Jumping Jack Flash, Luke Warm Scorpio, Funk House Fuck, Wonder What's on Nitro Right Now, Blazing Saddles, Nothing Better To Do, Butch Bradshaw and the Funk Dance Kid, Flash in the Pan, 
High Energy 2000, Play That Funky Music White Boy, Country Funkin', and my favourite, APA by the Test. Justin Bradshaw almost takes Double J's head off with a big boot. Flash gets tagged down and Jared counters his body slam with a body slam of his own, but Flash lands a dropkick after Double J poses to the crowd. Funk hits a nice jumping clothesline before tagging Bradshaw back in, and Bradshaw wants Barry Windham. The referee gets distracted here and this gives Ricky and Robert a chance to hit Flash at the guardrails. Bradshaw refocuses and he goes after Double J, but Flash Funk can't get up and now we've got officials checking on another Funk tonight. Flash has to get sent to the back so it's now a 2 on 1 handicap match. We come back from a commercial break and Jeff Jarrett takes a pump handle slam. Ricky Morton then grabs Bradshaw from the outside and this leads to Bradshaw leaving the ring where he takes a lariat from the former NWA champion Barry Windham. We get a few quick tags next as the NWA try to keep Bradshaw under control but surprisingly Bradshaw didn't need a tag partner. He stops a double team move and he wipes Jarrett out with a big clothesline from hell and Bradshaw defeats Windham and Double J. As if this faction couldn't look any fucking worse. They try to save things though by launching an attack after the bell but Bradshaw is still kicking everyone's asses. That is until Jim Cornette uses his tennis racket and Bradshaw takes way too long in giving James E some payback. After this happens the whole faction jump Bradshaw at the same time and they pull off a 4 man assisted back suplex and neckbreaker combo. Barry Windham then delivers 2 running splashes right to the knee while Bradshaw is locked in the figure 4 and the NWA celebrate their big beatdown afterwards. I don't know man, we're in the era of cool heel factions, DX, the NWO, the nation and their upcoming revamp that makes them even cooler. From a charismatic standpoint, in early 1998 this faction is just really lacking. We have a Vader and Kane confrontation next on Raw while Kevin Nash and Buff Bagwell team up to face the Steiners on Nitro. So Hollywood Hogan's gonna pay Kevin Nash's jackknife tab but we don't see a powerbomb in this match unfortunately. We do get to see the usual Buff Bagwell arm drag in the pose that follows and Kevin Nash thought this was absolutely hilarious. Scott's like, alright motherfucker try that again. Buff doesn't try it again but he does floor Scotty after a kick to the midsection but Scott quickly comes back with a Steiner line and a double underhook suplex. The crowd pops when Rick comes in and he imitates Buff Bagwell's signature poses but the fun and games stop when Nash and Bagwell use underhanded tactics behind the referee's back. Rick protests from his corner but this just distracts the referee even more. Nash gets tagged in and he sends Scotty's headwear flying to the outside after a punch and more quick tags from the NWO makes the heel team look like the veterans while Rick and Scott struggle to work together. Rick has to save Scott from getting pinned yet Scott makes no attempts to tag in his partner. Nash hits a big boot, Buff chokes Scotty at the ropes, Nash comes back in and he wrenches down on Scotty's neck and the NWO team continue to outperform the Steiner brothers. Nash says fuck it and he goes for a powerbomb but Rick runs in again to stop that from happening. Buff tags in and Scotty floors him with another Steiner line and Scotty now has the perfect opportunity to tag out but he doesn't take it. Scott refuses to tag in his brother and instead he wins the match all on his own, hitting Buff with a Frankensteiner while Nash was too busy talking to the audience. Rick's totally pissed off, more so than all those other times Scott wouldn't tag him in. Rick and DiBiase want to know what Scott's thinking and Scott says he still won the match and that's all that matters. Kevin Nash shit stirring in the background was absolutely fantastic but it's now apparent that Rick and Scott can't get along and something's gotta give soon. The slow build for this one has been good so far. On Raw, Wink Collins announces a WrestleMania sellout. You may remember old Wanky Collins back in the Billionaire Ted skits but he's been strangely brought out to Raw to let fans know that ticket sales for WrestleMania exceeded expectations. Kane though could not care about ticket sales and look, dumb fuck Wink just stands there while Kane sets off his pyro. Run you fucking knobhead. Vader's music plays as Wine Collins was about to get chokeslammed and Vader grabs a microphone. He says Kane stuck his nose in his business and Kane drew first blood, so at no way out Kane's ass belongs to Vader. He then says he's gonna put out Kane's fire and he grabs a fire extinguisher. Kane takes a few blasts right to the face and he's forced to retreat and head back up the rampway. So you mean to tell me this whole time all one needed to do to make Kane go away was use common fire protection apparatus and everything would be under control? Do you think Vader's gonna remember to bring what's essentially Kane's kryptonite to no way out? I fucking bet he doesn't. 
We have made it to the end of another episode of Reliving the War, everyone. On Raw, Steve Austin takes on Road Dog Jesse James. On Nitro, we've got Sting vs. Randy Savage. Michael Buffer's on hand to introduce the competitors in the Nitro main event, and boy oh boy, Sting's entrance takes forever. It's awesome, don't get me wrong, it's all about the spectacle, and even after everything that's happened to Sting, he's still got a certain allure and mystique about him. But it takes a long time, that Alamo Dome's a pretty tall building. This should have been his Starcade entrance, this full descent from the rafters. The fans in the arena remain off their seats as Savage launches an early attack, and when Sting shows no pain, the Macho Man decides he's gonna leave the ring. Sting gives chase and the Macho Man takes a few guardrail shots and a body slam on the entranceway. The two then get in the ring and Macho gets floored with a hard right hand, but a rake to the eyes gives Macho a chance to regroup. Savage wants to continue the fight on the outside, but Sting throws Macho Man into the ring post and he lines up a guardrail stinger splash. Savage hits Sting with his ring jacket, yeah it's his fucking ring jacket, and this stops the stinger splash while also stunning the icon. Back in the ring, Savage removes a turnbuckle pad before hitting a double axe handle from the top to the outside. Sting takes some more damage on the outside and he takes a pile driver in the middle of the ring, but we get a stinger no sell and Savage shits himself when Sting screams at Macho. We see a stinger splash, but the Macho Man dodges the second and Sting hits that exposed turnbuckle. Randy now has a chance, he goes upstairs, he hits the elbow drop, he covers Sting, but Hulk Hogan runs down and he pulls Savage off the stinger. The referee calls for the bell, so Macho defeats Sting via disqualification. Hogan wants to be the man who defeats Sting, so he slaps Savage across the face and he tells him to fall in line. Randy doesn't get a chance to retaliate because Lex Luger pulls him out of the ring for a fight, so Sting's left all alone with Hollywood Hogan, or so we thought. NWO guys hit the ring and while Sting has no issues taking them out, this distraction gives Hogan a chance to get out of the ring. Think about this for a moment though, nobody benefited from this at all. Macho defeated Sting via DQ, yes, but Macho also got smacked around by Hogan and Luger kicked his ass on the outside. Sting just took a loss on Nitro and he would have got pinned too if Hulk Hogan didn't get involved. Randy definitely had Sting defeated and Hulk Hogan acted like the big shot but he still ran away from Sting at the end of the bout. So really, all of this made everyone look worse instead of anyone looking better. Also, what happened to the problems between Kevin Nash and Randy Savage? Is this going to get brought up again or is it another fleeting NWO moment that's forgotten about just as things start heating up? Tune in next week, same WCW time, same WCW channel. Gunn says the outlaws may have done a bad thing tonight, but when the ratings come in tomorrow at 6 o'clock, there will be a few suits in Connecticut that will love the New Age outlaws. Austin's got his BMF walk on tonight, and both outlaws get attacked on the outside. Austin brings the road dog to the commentary desk for more punishment before getting the match in the ring, and the referee throws the match out immediately when Austin hits Billy with a great looking Stone Cold stunner. Austin wants to keep on fighting, but DX show up and Stone Cold gets pulled out of the ring. Austin gets his ass kicked by DX and the outlaws outside the ring and inside, and the boys tie Austin up in the ropes while HBK shoves the WWF Championship in Stone Cold's face. Sean says Austin's never won the big one, and this is as close as Steve's ever going to get to winning the big one, and just then Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie show up. Cactus still has a drip attached to get those all important fluids, competitive juices, and Terry Funk's in his hospital gown looking as crazy as ever. DX leave and Stone Cold chases the heels back up the ramp, Raw goes off the air with Austin returning to the ring where he rips up a DX shirt. It was easy to pick a winner this week, Raw wins episode 119. Some may say the dumpster thing went on for too long, but I thought the outlaws done a fantastic job by showing remorse and then being swayed by Sean and Hunter. It was different. I know DX had their comedic opening too, but this week I thought D-Generation X were a bit more vicious and a bit more manipulative and this was good, but this could also come down to Sean not wanting to fuck around anymore because basically, HBK's downward spiral really kicks off this week and when you see him at the Wrestlemania press conference, you just know that something's up. Sean needed to get away and he needed to sort himself out. Anyway, that means Raw's now got 54 points, Nitro's got 51 points and we've got 14 ties. In the television ratings, Nitro recorded their biggest head to head rating of the Monday Night War so far, a 4.9, Raw stayed put with a 3.5. On Raw next week, Steve Austin steals the World Wrestling Federation Championship and he challenges Shawn Michaels to come get it back. 
the Outlaws recreate the dumpster bump, and The Rock and Farouk have to put aside their differences in a tag team match. On Nitro, Steve Regal wrestles Bill Goldberg, you know the story with that one. The Outsiders are in action against the Steiner Brothers, and Hollywood Hogan vs Randy Savage takes place inside the ring. You heard me right, it's not a pay per view match, it happens on Nitro. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reliving the War, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks again guys, take care.